Hi everybody, I'm Bill from in situ Ecosystems, and we're here today to talk to you about the Rio, as well as our pumice uh, rock background kits, and to show you how they're installed and how they work. Uh, the first thing we want to do, though, is make sure that you watch the unboxing video for the Amazonia so that you know all of its parts and pieces before we get started on this little venture. Okay, everybody, what we have here now is the kit for the Rio. Uh, in the bag here are all the pieces that you see off over here to the left. And what we're trying to do is give you an idea of where they're eventually going to go. The, the first pieces you need to know about are the power adapter and the dimmer. Those, these two are your power source and your control of the power for the flow of the water uh, out of the pump. This uh, series of pieces here is for the uh, strainer. Uh, this comes into the, uh, the fitting inside the vivarium. We attach this piece here, this piece here, put the filter sock over it, and that acts as a debris filter for the intake of the pump and keeps the pump clear from debris. What you see over here are a couple of other fittings. This again is, is the exact same fitting as over here, except now we're going to use it as a diffuser uh, for a waterfall or a stream. These pieces here are for the drip wall. This is the riser tube for the waterfall or stream or drip wall. And this is the drip tube for the drip wall system. So what we want to show you now is the basic features of a Rio system. Here you can see the outflows uh, from the pump system that are underneath the vivarium, the riser tubes uh, for the waterfall and the drip wall, and then the uh, outflow for the water stream uh, if you choose to make a water stream. On the waterfall here, you can see the riser tube comes up and we have a diffuser here at the end the diffuser is really important because if you don't put that on, you'll have the stream will be shooting water out as opposed to creating a bubbling effect. Here is the drip wall. The drip wall riser comes to a T, and then the tubes come out to the sides with end plugs. Uh, later as we go, we'll show you how to make the, the drip pours that you want using a hot, a very fine tip soldering iron. Uh, down here you can see the stream with its uh, diffuser on as well. It's just closer to the base, and this shows you a different kind of configuration and how you might want to run it if you just, all you want is a stream. So now what we'd like to do is show you how the Rio works from the, the plumbing configuration standpoint. What we have here is two configurations. One is the do-it-yourself, and the other is the factory install. The factory install has an intake, to the pump and then an outflow to one of the three configurations that you would have chosen. Here you can see the do-it-yourself installation where the pump is on the outside with the inflow to the pump here and then lastly the drain system which is still intact and, is, and goes through this tube right here. Okay finally we're ready to have a little fun and we're gonna take a look at how we get started. The first thing we did is pick out a piece of wood, and you can see here that this wood has got a lot of nice features to it. Once we add the rocks and the rest of the background hardscape, it's going to start to become really interesting. Uh, we orient it on the left side of the terrarium because we have a, an outflow on the right side, which is where we want to put all of our stream and our waterfall. Uh, the first step in all this is to, of course, place the wood, make sure you've got a good piece of wood. And anybody that builds a terrarium will tell you the best thing about a terrarium is it's the wood that you pick. So don't miss out and, and get a bad piece of wood. Take your time and find a nice piece of wood. Um, this one here is gonna be beautiful. Uh, the next step after we do this is we're gonna to have to strip off a few pieces. Uh, first, we're gonna take off the vent covers that you see here, they just lift off. Uh, we'll take off the back vent cover. And then uh, a little more delicately, uh, we'll remove the fans because we don't want to damage them. We just pull up on the back uh, cable and that will release the fan. You take the strain relief, put it in a box, and then just feed the power cord down through it. 
and that will take the fan out for you. We'll save that in a box over here. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. We'll pull up, take the strain relief off, and then take the cable for the fan off. And so now we've got our, our uh, delicate parts removed, except for the light. I don't think the light will be in too much of our way, so we'll leave it as it goes. Okay, and then the next step is to remove the wood, lay the vivarium on its back, and to scuff it, we're going to end up scuffing, we're going to start scuffing that surface. So what we have here is 120 to 200 grit sand, sanding block. Whether you have the composite back panel or glass, you're going to want to scuff the glass or the panel to make sure that anything we adhere to the back after this uh, adheres. Uh, it's really important that you apply anything that you're going to stick to a scuff surface within eight hours. Otherwise, that scuff surface will oxidize and you'll end up not getting the adhesion you want. Uh, the scuffing process is really simple. You just, you know, sand. Uh, I like to do a circular motion. Um, this only takes a few minutes. This, this composite back panel material is really soft. You don't want to uh, scuff it to the bare aluminum or to the primer. All you want to do is break that surface so that it's not shiny and that you have essentially created the very fine uh, grooves that increase the surface area as well as uh, opened up the a surface for a chemical bond. And so there we are, literally within just a few seconds, the surface is ready for bonding. What we'll do next, kind of to make sure everything stays good for bonding, is we'll vacuum it to keep it clean. You do not want to contaminate a surface like this once you've scuffed it. Keep grease, oil, soap, anything that uh, will create a parting film on it you need to keep away from it because that parting film will uh, will cause your rocks or whatever you're adhering to come off. Okay, now we're going to explain a little bit about how to place the rocks and get the rocks ready for uh, uh, bonding to the back wall of the vivarium. Here I've cut a piece of paper about the size of the back panel so I know how to put the rocks on here and, I, and organize them so that they're exactly the way I want them. I've vacuumed them all off, right? And I've set them up so I can show you some tricks and tips about how to do this in a way that will optimize your ability to plant as well as to create the water feature that we're looking for. What I really want to do is create a little pool off of this rock here so that it will run over this edge and then down. If it runs down this rock, we want it to capture on this rock here and overflow in this area here, drip down this area here, and then overflow again and drip down over into this area. So we have a little zigzag of water that's going to be happening um, on this side of the terrarium. On this side, we're going to have the wood, but nonetheless, I want to show you if you don't have any wood and you want to plant this back wall so that you have epiphytic plants on it, uh, the, then how you place the rocks is really important. Uh, for example, we're showing you here that these rocks are set up to create a crevice here. These two rocks create a crevice here. And what we'll do is put a little bit of dirt in there so they have something to root into. We've moved both of these rocks down so to make sure that we clear the circulation system. You don't want to impact the diffuser uh, as it's running. Um, and then lastly, I want to show you that you can manipulate these rocks. I want to create a crevice with this rock against the edge of the of the of the vivarium. So I'm going to cut this edge off here. I'm going to show you how to break that and uh, and then stick that where you want it. Uh, after we do these operations, the next step is to get it put into the vivarium. Make sure it's exactly the way you want it, and then we'll bond everything together. What we said in our last section is that we want to take this rock here and we want to create a crevice that we can plant into against the edge of the vivarium. But I've got this edge, this area right here that I got to break off. It's actually really simple. The, 
the pumice actually breaks pretty easily. We just kind of score it like this. You know, use uh, the wedge. And you can see here it's cracking. All right, we'll just, there we go. So that's the edge right there. And what I'll do is, now I've made a little bit of a, a, a ragged edge here. So now I can take this piece here and I can rub it on that edge and it'll file off the, the, the bump that will allow me to make this piece and stick it up against the glass. So now see how that's become essentially a nice flat surface. And uh, by the way, you shouldn't be doing as I'm doing. That you really kind of want to protect your lungs and wear a face mask to make sure that this is good. Uh, that you're not breathing in these uh, silica, uh, the silicon dust. Okay, so our next step is to take this rock here and create the pool I was talking about up here, as well as to, to drill the hole into the allow the tubing to come up through the back. This is going to be a little bit of a delicate operation because what I want to do is create a cusp in here uh, without breaking everything and, and splitting. This rock could split. If it does, this video is going to have an aw shit in it. And, <laughs> and then we'll start and figure out something else. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here by just kind of tapping here at an angle. I don't want to do a big major um, crack in this whole big piece. So we need to be really careful. This is breaking away really nicely now, now that I have it started. You can see here I've created a cusp in here. The bubbler is going to come in here and the water is going to come up and flow over. I'm going to do a little bit of decor of uh, the finishing work here. I'm going to sand off these rough edges. All right. Looks like that. I'm going to Make sure that we have a nice lead up to the to the edge over here. Okay, so what you can see here is I've created a cup. When you put it flat against the vivarium, there's this imp impression here now that will hold a little bit of water and allow it to flow over. The uh, next step here is to get the the tube into it, the the riser tube into this cupped area so that you can uh, you know actually get the water to flow into it. There's a couple of ways to do that. One is to come around it with the tube and just cover everything over with um, with silicone and orchiata, which we'll show you later. Or you can come in here and drill a hole in the bottom and do the same thing. Only thing is now it's not coming up over the top. Um, another way to do that is to create a groove that you allow the tube to come in into. And so the uh, we had this part already, this rock already cut, so um, you can't drill a groove into it, but you can cut a groove into it. You can just kind of come in here with another rock and just grind it until you get a, a nice deep groove. And that will allow you to put the tube in as well. Uh, what I'm gonna do to kind of save time and uh, put a lot of risk into the project is I'm gonna drill a hole and the hole's going to go, I use got an old bit here, one that I don't care about. It's about um, just a little over three-eighths of an inch in diameter. And I'm going to just come in here like this and drill. And see, you can see here now I've got a, a hole that I just drilled in. It just really doesn't take anything to drill through this stuff.
And so now I've got a way for the, the riser tube to come up through the bottom over here. And then we're going to end up um, running it up here. You're gonna, never going to see this riser tube by the time we get done putting everything over and putting orchiata and, uh, or tree fern, whatever you want to use, over the top of the silicone. So that's how we're going to get the, um, the riser tube up here. The next step after, now that we've done this, is to put the uh, rocks in place as well as the riser tube inside the vivarium and to bond everything together. Okay, what I've done now is I've taken all the rocks, very carefully vacuumed them off, and placed them inside the terrarium the way I wanted them. Uh, they didn't actually fit exactly the way I like, so I rearranged them a little bit. But generally, we still have the pool over here, cascading down with the drip, cascading down this face with another drip, and then the, crevasse, uh, the crevices here for planting the uh, epiphytes. I've cut this rock here so that it'll fit against the glass. I can get a rock or a plant over here. And everything is below the circulation system. Uh, here you can see that I've, I've put the, uh, the uh, riser tube in. Uh, and I've put a little clip on it here to hold it in place for me. And, uh, but that's all going to get covered over with silicone and um, orchiata. You won't even see that. All this will essentially just disappear for us as we as we move into the, the the adhesion of the rocks, and so that's the next step is to actually put these rocks in and to uh, one at a time, and to adhere them one at a time, and then uh, to fill in the in between with uh, silicone and orchiata.
Now we're just going to clean these out. We're going to use a razor just to clean up the silicone, as you probably have done before. Clean off all the extra material that may have touched the glass that you don't want to see. Peel the extra silicone off of the rocks. If you've got any on, on the rocks, it'll just peel off. Just rub it and it'll come loose. And then the last step before we're ready to install the Rio and the rest of it is to clean it. And we'll do one last vacuum job. So the next step is to hook up the Rio and the drain systems and to get started on finishing this. Uh, as you can see here, I've hooked up the pump to the potentiometer, which is also called the dimmer, and the Rio power supply. One of the things I did before I hooked it up is I made sure that the dimmer was turned all the way off. We don't want the pump running at all if there's no water in it. Another thing I did is I hooked up my drain tube to my sump so that now when I'm starting to play with the water, I don't have to worry about water running out uh, onto the back of uh, the surface I'm setting this on. And once that gets set up, you just come over and tip it back up, turn it around. And now you've got your, your system ready to start to work. The next thing I do after this is I take the little tube that's in your kit and I connect it to one of the fittings, the inlet fitting here, and then I connect it to the inside of the, uh, the trough here on the L elbow that's sticking out. The elbow is facing this direction, so we're just going to put it in, and it's going to face to the right and down. Okay, so we just do that and get that tube connected. Okay, once we have that tube connected, then we're ready to actually start to uh, finish this. One last thing you wanna do before we actually go into the finishing steps is make sure we have it clean one more time. The reason we vacuum it is because we don't want any uh, dirt to get into the pump at this point. We don't have a filter sock on it, we don't have a strainer on it, and anything in the pump is just gonna make a lot of problems. So I'm gonna keep the vivarium as clean as we can while we go through this particular step. The next step after this is to uh, put some water in the trough uh, because we wanna get this thing running before we actually put any plants or wood or other hardware in here. We want to make sure that the Rio is operating properly. So we're going to put, here we have one quart of, of liquid. Just pour it in. And if you can see it here, that comes almost all the way to the drain already. Uh, if we put one more quart in, it's going to actually go over the top. I'm going to put just a little bit extra in. Make sure our drain is working properly. And what will happen if it is working properly is very soon you should be able to see water coming down through the tube and draining. Once you see the water coming through your drain tube, you know that the drain is working properly. It's safe to go to the next step. At this point, we have a level of water along the top here, up to the top drain. And so the, the pump is below the water line. All we have to do is get the bubble of water through the, the pump chamber to make sure it's primed properly. And the easiest way to do that 
is with the mister. And I'll show you. Just put a couple of pumps on the misting system here. And I put the end up against the end of the fitting. And I just fill it. And I actually do that until I see water coming out the top of the Rio. And it is. Right, just like, uh, actually it's working just like we thought it would. Right. At that point, there's no more air in the, in the pump. And it's safe to put the strainer and the filter sock over the top of the, the inlet. Just push out all the air out of the sock. There's no more air in it. And now we have the Rio ready to go. And at this point, all I have to do is come over to the potentiometer and turn it on. Should not be noisy at all. If it is, uh, it could be that there's an air bubble, and we hear it making a little bit of noise. So I'm going to go back and reprime it one more time to make sure there's no air in in the pump chamber. So all I do is just turn it off, okay, just like we hit, did, and I'm going to just go backwards in steps, take off the filter sock, take off the strainer. Grab my mister and reprime it. Gives you a little trouble. Just turn it on slowly. And it should run. Okay. Make sure you put your filter sock back on because you don't want anything going in and disrupting the pump. Now you can turn this to whatever level of flow that you like. One of the things that you'll need to do is make sure that you don't have substrate in the runoff area. The way we take care of that is by placing EpiWeb in the, uh, on the surface in the back to allow the water to run underneath it. So I've got one large piece here, like this, and you'll notice that it needs to be trimmed. So I'm going to do that real quick. Just take my X-Acto knife and cut out a notch so that it will fit. Now the EpiWeb is allowing for a drain to go underneath. Um, there's a drain underneath the, the, where the substrate's going to be so your plants aren't going to get wet, your roots aren't going to get wet, and then it's just draining straight down underneath it. And you can see there's been no change in the flow. Right? Once you're satisfied that everything is working good, you can take the next piece of EpiWeb we supply and you can literally cover the trough with it if you like. 
you don't need to have a trough open. I just make sure it's below the vents so that you're not blocking the vents. Okay. And, uh, and all you really need to do is just make sure your misting system is uh, putting enough water into the terrarium so that the, the pump will run for you. Or you can add it manually yourself like this. Uh, you don't ever have to worry about adding too much because if you add more than it's capable of holding, uh, what will happen is it'll just run out the back through your drain system. So every three or four days, if you don't have a misting system, grab a quart of water, dump it in, and let it drain for you. And then that's really all the maintenance you have to do with the Rio. Okay, folks, uh, what we uh, haven't shown you is actually how to use the Rio drip wall system yet. So we want to take a couple of minutes here to show you how to hook up a drip tube in case you want to have a drip wall. Um, again, we have the riser tubing that you saw before. Now we have a drip tube here that we supply as well, a T and then the end pieces for the drip tubing. Typically what happens is you want the drip tube along the top of the vivarium and you want it to drip down over the top of rocks, but you don't want it to drip randomly. All right, you're gonna have, pick out a rock and say, okay, I want this drip to come down the face of this rock and then cascade onto the rock below it and onto the rock below that. So when you set up your rocks in a drip wall, typically you want your thinnest rocks at the top with your medium rocks in the middle and your big, thicker rocks at the bottom. And you want their faces to come out at an angle so that they fall out onto the next one and fall onto the next one. If they come in the other direction, when they fall down, if they're uh, concave in, then what's going to happen is the water's going to run into the wall, to come on, hit the edge of the next rock, and run down the sides. So it's important to get that drip positioned, you know, literally perfectly, so that it drops and face over the faces that you set up when you lay out your pumice rock. The first step uh, for making the drip system is to position your riser along the top wherever it makes sense. You're gonna probably zigzag in along some rocks. You'll cover this tube with silicone and orchiata or tree fern. And so the, the, the riser tube needs to be kind of set up where you want it. Um, once you get it to the top and it's positioned where, you, where, you, where you'd like it, you cut the tubing to make sure it covers both sides and you insert the, the T into the top. Of course, this can be done before you put the silicone in and I would recommend that because it's a little bit difficult to get this tubing to fit. All right, there we go, that's good enough. All right, and then, um, and of course you want this tubing to lay flat so you get it twisted enough so that it will lay flat. Okay, and then, uh, then of course, you um, put on the, the drip tubing onto the T. Another piece of drip tubing onto the T. Like this, you'll drape those along the top. You're gonna, you may wanna silicone them in in certain spots. Uh, you cut them to fit. You cut those edges off, you put the, the tube or the plug in on each end. Here's another one here. All right, and so now I want you to imagine that this tube is laying where you want it on the top of your rocks. You've got it siliconed in, and it's positioned uh, so that you're at the faces that you want the drip uh, to, to uh, come in on. The next step is to take a fine-tipped soldering iron or a pin or anything that you've got that will get hot, 
I like the fine tip soldering irons because they can make a big enough hole. Pins actually really make a really small hole. And in this case, you're going to want a, a certain amount of water to come out of these holes and you're going to want them to be uniform. So as this gets hot, the next step is to um, literally is just to come in and melt a hole. So uh, you just get that soldering iron hot enough and it'll poke a hole in there really nicely for you. You want it to melt and leave a nice open hole. It usually only takes just a second to do this. Like, like, like that, poke that hole in there. And um, it's usually not, uh, I'm not gonna tell you to do this with the water running, but I do. Uh, so I can see, you know, as I poke the hole, how it's going to drip down and what intensity it'll drip down. And then, uh, and so maybe another one here. There's another one right there now. It goes really fast. And so like right there, maybe right here. And so now you can turn on the water flow. You can see those dripping down. You do this, of course, after you have everything set up. If you screw it up and you uh, make the holes too big or something's not quite right, you can always go back, just replace these tubes. It's just aquarium uh, airline tubing. And that's um, how you set up your drip wall. Uh, the last thing we want to show you, or there's two more things we want to show you, is I like the idea of removable hardware so I can catch frogs or animals and I don't have to um, go looking for them too hard. If I can move stuff around, that makes it a lot easier to catch them. So whenever I do wood, I always try and pick a piece of wood that has enough interesting features on it that I don't have to go and glue features to the, to the terrarium. Todd Kelly taught me that trick. And so you can put your, your wood in in any orientation you like. I think that this might be a little better, a little more interesting for view. Okay, so the last trick I want to show you, and I think probably a lot of people already know this trick, is how to attach a bromeliad. The pumice actually drills very easily, as you saw earlier when we were making the, um, the waterfall. And so what we, all you do is just take a drill with a bit in it that's about the same size as the, the stem of the uh, bromeliad. And you just put a, you look at the orientation that it wants to be and you take your drill with about the same angle and orientation so you can get it to move up or down depending on what you really want. And just drill a hole, goes that quick. If it's too small, you can open it up a little bit. But then all you do is just uh, stick the bromeliad in and you're done. So that's the fast way of attaching your bromeliads. You do the same thing, of course, with wood, but the pumice is actually a lot faster and very quick. So the next step with this is to plant it and to start enjoying this terrarium. We'll finish you know, our work with by you know, putting all the pieces back together, getting the glass vent cover on, and uh, the front vent covers and the doors. But after this, it's uh, pretty much over. And we want to say thank you for watching this video. We've enjoyed making this, uh, showing you how to use the Rio and how to um, build this up. These are a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy yourself as well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.